Hey there, my name is Priyam and I welcome you to Face. You are currently watching the first episode of Anybody Can Code series. By the 38th video, you will be a programmer proficient in C programming. As long as you follow this series and do as I advise you, you will be able to code well enough to get placed in your dream company. Well, you still need to prepare for the aptitude round and the HR interview, but at least the technical exams won't hold you back anymore. As the name of the series suggests, no prior coding knowledge is required and we will be starting from the ABCs of coding. We at FACE believe that the best way to learn something new is to try doing it by yourself. Thus, in all episodes of ABC, you'll learn C programming by understanding basic codes and practicing similar problems after the video. But for this first episode, before we start coding, let's understand what C programming actually is. C programming is just a language. As computers don't understand English or Hindi yet, you need to learn a new language to speak with them. After learning the C programming language, you can order computers to do various tasks for you. There are two important things that you need to know about C programming. Firstly, C is a high level programming language. It means that it's closer to the human language than to machine language. Once you are proficient, you can easily read and understand a code written in C programming language. For a computer to understand C programming, we use a compiler. A compiler turns a C program into a machine language, that is ones and zeros. Secondly, while C++ and Java are object-oriented programming languages, C happens to be a process-oriented programming language. In Java, a programmer creates an object and then performs tasks on that object. Whereas in C, a set of instructions is executed and a programmer's main job is to flow the, uh, control the flow of the power in the code. By now, you will be having several questions in your mind like, what kind of instructions do you have to write and how do you control the flow of power? These questions will be answered in the later episodes. For now, let's begin coding. Instead of downloading and installing a compiler, I'll simply use an online compiler. As you can see, the classic hello world code is already pre-filled. Before we start coding, let's understand the most basic code, that is the hello world code. Line 1 to 8 are comments. These are used to make the code readable and help people understand the purpose of your code. You can write whatever you wish to in these comments as they are completely ignored by the compiler. So I'll just go ahead and Type whatever you wish to. Also, another thing to note here is that there are two types of comments that you can make based on your requirements. When you need to write multiple lines, you use a forward slash followed by an asterisk, as it has been used here. But you need to end this comment with an asterisk followed by a forward slash, which is here. Another way to write a comment is just by writing two forward slashes, such as this. Here, the entire line becomes a comment. You don't need to end a comment. Let's continue understanding this pre-filled code. This code begins with hashtag include stdio.h. Hashtag include is a command in which, with which most C programmers begin. You will type this every time you code, so you might as well memorize it. stdio.h is the most basic library in C and stands for standard input and output. Instead of books, stdio.h library contains functions like printf and scanf. There are various other functions and libraries that we use. You will understand and use them in the later episodes. The second line of the code consists of int main. Here, int stands for integer and main represents the main function. As we will learn about functions in later episodes, for now, all you need to know is that everything between the curly braces used in line 2 and 6 is a set of instructions which will be followed by the computer. The first instruction is to print hello world. Here printf stands for print function 
and part inside the curve brackets is the argument of the print function. Printf simply prints its argument, which is hello world. The next instruction in line number 5 is return 0. As our main function is of integer data type, we must return an integer, that is 0. As main is the only function used, return 0 command becomes a redundant line and makes no difference here. Even if we remove it, there will be no noticeable change. But it will be of importance when you use multiple functions. This too will be discussed in later episodes. Once your coding is over, we need to compile and run it by simply clicking here. It asks me to choose a language. I'll go ahead and choose C. As you can see, the compiler has printed hello world. All right, now let's try to write our first code of the series. Say I want to write a program where I enter a number, let's say 250. And the compiler needs to reply monkey see monkey do colon 250. So I'll begin by breaking the problem statement into small parts. Step one will be to prompt a user to type a number. For this, I'll use a printf function. Step two will be to take the input value and store it in a variable using a scanf function. In step three, I'll print monkey see monkey do and the value stored in the variable using printf function. So now that I have planned my program, let's get coding. I'll begin by including the standard library. Including stdio.h allows me to use the printf function and the scanf function in my code. Now we'll start writing the code body by curly braces and uh, declare a variable int a. Before we move forward, let's understand the term variable. Variable is a container that stores a value. A value may be removed or replaced with another new value, but the container is very particular about what gets stored in it. As the value I wish to store is a number or an integer, I have to use the data type int. By writing int a, I have created a container which can store integer value. Int is one of the several data types in C. We'll explore the other data types like characters, floats, doubles, and many more in future episodes. Now I'll prompt a user to input a value using a printf function. While coding, be careful and add a semicolon at the end of each command. If you forget to type this, the compiler will throw an error. As discussed, printf simply prints the argument contained within it. Now when I compile and run this code, the compiler will print enter a number colon. Now I need to fetch this input value and store it in a container A. To do so, I have to use the scanf function. Scanf function reads the input value and stores it in a specified address. The two important things to note in this line is the ampersand symbol and the percentage D. Remember that in scanf function, you will always use the ampersand symbol. It refers to the address or location of the variable. Basically, this line is telling the compiler to store the value in a location of the integer A. We will discuss the address of variables in depth in the later episodes. Percentage %d is used in C programming as a placeholder for integer values. In scanf, it represents the value to be stored in the variable written in the argument. Finally, I'll command a compiler to print the text we want. I'll use the printf statements to do so. Notice that we are using percentage %d in printf but aren't using ampersand symbol. Ampersand is only used in scanf functions. Here, percentage %d represents the integer value stored in the variable container a. I'll end this code by simply writing return 0. 
not writing it here will make no difference and will still give me the output. But for the sake of completion, I'll just include it for now. Now let's compile and run this code. So it's giving me an error. So obviously I have forgotten to type int main. Now let's try again. I still have an error. There are two quotation marks here. I just need one quotation mark. All right, all this I'm able to do using the output option. This time our code is working correctly. Now it's asking me, it's prompting the user to enter a number. So I'll just enter a random number, let's say 250. And we can see the output. It says monkey see monkey do 250. Hence our code is successfully compiled. Now let's understand the flow of power in this code. As conditional and looping statements are not present, the power simply flows from the top to the bottom, executing one line at a time. I advise you to try compiling this code by yourself on an online compiler. Don't copy paste the code. Writing it from the scratch by yourself using your memory and logic will help you understand, bet, help you better understand C programming. Before leaving, let me give you a quick tip. To add a new line while printing, we use a black backslash n command. For example, I'll remove all the unnecessary part and give a very simple command. Now I'll simply run the code to see the output. Yes, as you can see, all the lines, hi, how are you, I'm in town, wanna have lunch together are in separate lines. Now wanna have lunch together has one space in front of it. That's because I have accidentally given one space here. If I remove this and run it again, that line also, uh, that space also is removed. With this, we have come to an end of episode one. We'll learn more about C in the next episodes. So stay tuned. Hey YouTube, how are you doing? Stay tuned to Facebook for more awesome videos. Don't forget to subscribe.